When we talk about the most underrated NRL players, the same names are usually brought up. They're usually guys who are on really good teams, but they're always one of the lower options and not one of the main playmakers. Guys like Christian Welch and Jerome Hughes, guys like Appy Corso and Alex Johnson are always named as the most underrated NRL players. Players who do their job week in, week out and can arguably take on the best in their position. However, there's one player who I think no one even rates as a decent NRL player who actually, when I did a bit of a deep dive, is the most underrated NRL player in the competition at the moment. And the man I'm talking about is the Manly Sea Eagles starting dummy half, Lachlan Croker. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you guys why he is the most underrated NRL player. But guys, before we get any further into the video, you know the rules by now. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and of course, get involved in that comment section. Let me know if you agree or if you don't, but let's get straight into the video. So let's go on a bit of an English journey. What does underrated mean? It means not rated or highly valued enough. Now, the players I just mentioned, yes, they are better, but at least they're talked about as being underrated NRL players. Guys like Jake Javovich and Dale Finucane, I would consider underrated, but at least they're talked about as one of the best players in their position, and they're always in discussions for New South Wales jerseys. So when we want to talk about the most underrated NRL player, it really has to be someone who no one really wants to talk about at all. And unfortunately, Lachlan Croker was not only never talked about, but many consider him one of the worst NRL players. If you were to ask people, where would you rank Lachlan Croker amongst the starting hookers? A lot of people would just simply write him off and put him towards the bottom when that is simply not the case. This was his first year in 2021 being the starting hooker and a lot of people didn't even want him to be hooker. There were only two people that backed him to be the starting hooker in 2021. One of them was the manly coach Des Hasler and I'll put my hand up and I'll take the ownership that I did too. Everyone thought Cade Cuss deserved to be the starting dummy half for the Manly Seagulls, but I and Desi were on the same wavelength, and I was very adamant that I thought Lachlan Croker should be the starting dummy half, and people are not happy. Even Manly fans a year ago, if they were to ask who was Manly's worst player, a lot of them, including little pro Enzo Vids, would say that Lachlan Croker was easily the worst player at Manly, and one of the worst NRL players. And he was proving a lot of people right at the start of the season when Manly, without Tom Trevojevic, were an absolute basket case, having the second worst start of the NRL era before everything turned around. And the interesting thing about Croker is why he flies under the radar so much is not only because of his perception, but because of where he ranks. He is easily Manly's least important spine player, and he had the lowest positional and playmaking stats out of a lot of them. But that's an interesting thing I just referred to, stats. Stats are not the be-all and end-all, but they do tell a cohesive story. And when you compare Lachlan Croker to the best dummy halves in the comp, not only does he hang with them, he even beats some of them. Now, when we want to talk about how important hookers are, it's no secret how important hookers are. They're probably, many people would believe, the fourth and least important spine position. But ever since the six again rule, they have skyrocketed. And being the first one to touch the footy in a set play or in a set of six pretty much all the time, they're really the reason and the way that halfbacks, five-eighths, and fullbacks can get their ball. Because if they don't have the proper service at a dummy half, then we're likely to see them fall. And I know that winning isn't everything, but let's take a look at the top five teams from the 2021 season. I know the Roosters finished fifth, but because of all their injuries and the way Parramatta Eels played against Penrith, I think it's fair to say they were the fifth most likely team to win the Premiership. So let's just name these players. Fifth place, Parramatta, they had Reed Marnie. Fourth place, Manly Seagulls had Lachlan Croker. Third place, Rabbitohs, they had Damien Cook. Second place, Panthers had Abby Coruscant. And first place, Storm, well, they had two bloody top 10 hookers, top five hookers even, in Brandon Smith and Harry Grant. Now, did I just name the top five hookers and then Lachlan Croker was there? Well, I like to think not, because when I talk about Lachlan Croker statistically, hanging with these blokes, he really does hang with these blokes and puts up a strong argument that he should be with these guys, which is crazy because when I said that Lachlan Croker is the most underrated NRL player, I bet you many of you went to the comments and you laughed at me. 
I know he is. Yeah, bloody laughed at me. But I'm going to read off some stats here. Well, I know stats aren't everything. They're going to paint a really good story. And for this, we're going to be comparing him to the four dummy halves that teams finished above Manly in the 2021 season. Harry Grant, Damien Cook, Abby Coruscant, and the best Dalian dummy half of 2021, Brandon Smith. So, we'll start off with the boring stuff, and we'll start off with defense. In average tackles, Lachlan Croker averaged 38 tackles a season, which compared to these four, puts him in third place. Now, Harry Grant, who came fourth, you can understand why he's not there, because unfortunately for him, he wasn't coming on until after the first 20 minutes of every game. And Brandon Smith, while he still played the full game, he did get moved to an edge. However, Lachlan Croker still averaged more tackles than both Brandon Smith and Harry Grant per game. And it's not like all these teams have, didn't have the same amount of possession. All these teams were decimating teams all season and all scored the most points. Damien Cook and Abby Corsair both beat him at 43 and 43 respectively, but Lachlan Croker does a lot better when we get to tackle efficiency. Lachlan Croker actually ranks second in tackle efficiency. The only person he's behind is Damien Cook. And for a guy who's been playing halves his entire life to come into the middle of the field and start having to make 40 tackles a game in the middle against the big pop boppers, to average attack well to have a tackle efficiency of 94.5% is absolutely insane, especially when you consider how poor defensively Manly were in 2021 against the better sides. He had a better tackle efficiency than Harry Grant and Appy Coruscant and Brandon Smith. So it's fair to say that Lachlan Croker, while many people think he's the worst player on this list, when we talk about defensively, he's not even close to being last. Actually, when you look at these stats, Brandon Smith is probably the weakest defender out of these players and he's considered the best because of his attacking ability. So while Lachlan Croker may be able to compete with Damien Cook and Abby Coruscant in defense, let's look at the attack. And while in the attack, Lock and Croker, he isn't that bad either. For combined try and line break assist, Lachlan Croker had 14, which puts him third on this list. Brandon Smith had 23, Harry Grant had 17, Damien Cook had 18, and Appy Corusau came in at last. So Lachlan Croker had the fourth most try and line break assist out of this slot. But where I would argue for him, like I just did for Brandon Smith and Harry Grant, is Brandon Smith was the number one playing op playmaker option for the Melbourne Storm. He was their best player. Damien Cook is arguably their third behind Walker and Latrell Mitchell because Adam Reynolds actually doesn't do that much playmaking. Appy Coruscant, well, he's actually third behind Nathan Cleary and Jerome Luai. Lachlan Croker is the only one of these players to out and out be the weakest player in his spine and therefore would have the least amount of playmaking to do. Yet, Appy Coruscant, he beats him by a landslide and he's putting up numbers similar to Harry Grant and Damien Cook. Now, Harry Grant, you could argue because he was out for so long, but he is close to Damien Cook, who was on a really good attacking team in the Rabbitohs. And when we rank him against every single starting dummy half, including Harry Grant, he actually finishes behind the three that I just mentioned were above him, Josh Hodgson and Reed Marnie. So he finishes sixth in that playmaking role, and Reed Marnie and Josh Hodgson are probably the number one options for their teams as well. So for Croker to be the fourth playmaker option at Manly and compete with these guys who take on much bigger roles than him is quite honestly ridiculous. And then when we look at the main attacking objective, which is tries, Lachlan Croker actually had more tries than Damien Cook and Appy Coruscant. So when we look at statistics, he's the only player to be in the middle of the road in each of these categories. The two Melbourne players, Smith and Harry Grant, are the weaker defenders, but then Appy and Damien Cook are the weakest attackers. So... What does that put Lachlan Croker? Well, he's dead set in the middle of every one of these categories and noted he's never last. He's never first, but he's never last. But he also is the least playmaking option at the Manly Seagulls. And defensively, he's having to share the load with Jake Zerovic, who we all know is one of the best defenders in the comp. So it's not like Croker is getting all these stats because he's dominating the ball and he has to make all these tackles. He's sharing the workload with players who everyone would argue are better players than him, which is absolutely ridiculous. So, with comparing to 2021 players, let's take it a step further. Let's take it, let's 
Wake him against Damien Cook with 2018. This was Damien Cook's best season, and it was the season where he stamped himself as the origin dummy half. Now, these two split the categories two and two. When it comes to tackle efficiency, Cook wins by point half a percent. He wins in tackles per game as well. However, with try and try assists, Croker has got two more, and Manly had a better win percentage. Now, take that with a grain of salt, because that is win percentage, but... Lachlan Croker is competing with Damien Cook's best year, who is the dummy half for New South Wales in this little dynasty that they're building right now. And Appy Corusau, the manly manly let go, and everyone crucified them for him, which to be fair, Appy did go on to win a competition in 2021. But during Penrith's massive undefeated streak in 2020, he and Lachlan Croker are also very similar. Croker smashes him in the try and try assist department, 14 to seven. Tackles per game, Appy destroys him in that 50 to 38. However, he only has 1.1% more tackle efficiency, and of course, Penrith had a greater higher win percentage than Manly did in 2021 in 2020. So I know some people hate stats, but when you look at that, that paints an obviously obviously good picture for Lachlan Croker, because he is statistically as good as the best dummy halves in the competition. That's right, the best dummy halves in the competition. Now. After reading that, where would you rank Lachlan Croker? It'd be a lot higher than 10th or in the bottom 6 where you would have ranked him earlier. So looking at this definition underrated, because of how underrated, and I mean the fact that many people would argue Lachlan Croker is easily Manly's worst player and one of the worst dummy halves in the comp, and he gets absolutely no praise, well, this man is putting up stats equal to his peers who are the best in his position. And let's not forget, this was Lachlan Croker's first ever season as the main dummy half. If I wanted to take out the first four games of the season, which I can't really do, but let's just say for argument's sake, I'd love to see his stats compared to these guys, because he would have had no tries and try assists, his tackles would have been down the mud, and obviously getting used to the physicality of being a dummy half, we could take out his tackle efficiency, that would go up as well. So, if I wanted to take his first four games out and average them out, he'd probably even be able to sneak a first place compared to Brandon Smith, Harry Grant, Damian Cook, and Appy Corusau, who are all going to be playing rep football soon and who are all the best dummy halves in the competition. And I know a lot of people will argue stats doesn't paint the whole picture. Well, in this predicament, I think it does because you can argue that Lachlan Croker was the least playmaking option at Manly. He was the worst player in that spine, for a lack of a better word, going up against guys who were so much important to better teams than Manly were, and yet Croker is still able to compete with them, which is absolutely crazy. So when we go back to that definition of underrated, meaning not rated or not valued high enough, Lachlan Croker is considered one of the lower dummy halves in the competition. He is never praised, he is never talked about because of the amount of Manly players who seem to be more important parts of that team than him. He competes with the best dummy halves in the competition and even can put up numbers close to two of the current dummy halves. The two who played for New South Wales in 2021, he competed with their best regular season. So, to talk about a player who is mostly underrated, Lachlan Croker, never even discussed in this category, yet these are the numbers he can put up. And even on face value, there's a reason I dug into this, because I thought he might have a chance because of watching Manly week in and week out in the 2021 season. Lachlan Croker was one of the most improved players in the competition, and I'm excited to see where he can go in 2022, considering 2021 was essentially his rookie year being a dummy half. But guys, let me know. Do you agree? Do you disagree Disagree with me in that comment section? Subscribe if you haven't already. This is your home for footy content in 2022. And smash that like button if you enjoyed. Just do it anyway. It makes me really happy. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.